What is good people, I am BA back once again with another reaction in the Tales from the Crypt series. This one is episode 9 from season 3 and it is called Undertaking Parlor. I've never seen this shit before, let's see what it's fucking saying to it. Everything's perfect in this intro. All the lighting of the oranges and blues and shit was what I was noticing that time. Quiet on the set! Deathly quiet. That was an awesome close-up. Tonight's sordid saga is about a couple of kids with time to kill. See, they're just dying to get into the horror movie business. Nice, a horror story set around a horror movie. I always like uh, ideas like that. I think it's used in, um, is it used in Scream 3 or something? Damn, shit, son of a bitch, fuck. What are you moaning about, Norm? That kid fucking loved getting to deliver that line. Oh, will you oh, stop being a God. geek? You're making me sick. Right. I am not a geek, okay? A geek is somebody who bites the heads off of chickens and then drinks the blood. That is not a geek. To my knowledge, that is not a geek. I thought they were quite computer savvy, less satanic ritually. Maybe I'm wrong about the geek culture. Uh, any geeks in the comments that bite the heads off chickens, feel free to correct me. I thought that was more of a voodoo ritual thing than a sort of IT department-y thing. Look, those things were not geeks. Just because those stupid movies say they're geeks, they're geeks. They're geeks. They're getting stalked by bad 80s filter effects. What? Something out there. Oh my god, you're right. It's 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 a parking lot. Come oh, on, no. man. It's a parking lot. Good comeback leather jacket. <laughs> the fuck? My man's getting stalked by one of them things from the desert planet on Star Wars. <laughs> 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 I got you, Normie! Yo, tell me that's not, um... Is that the guy from The Goonies? Meet the star of my new horror film, Chicken Shit in the Alleyway. <laughs> you didn't skip. <laughs> it's a catchy title. I'll check it out for title alone. Give it some banging artwork that isn't even in the film. I'm sold. You got the balls to make a real horror film? Yeah, yeah, Phil Normie eating a Twinkie. Yeah! <laughs> that would be more of a romantic comedy. A real horror film? Yeah. Yeah, sure. What do you got in mind? How would you like to shake hands with a dead man? Strange proposition. I have no idea what he has planned here. Damn. It's locked. Yeah. The mortuary's locked, mate. Why are you so surprised at that? Did you think the public had ease of access to the dead? This is how zombie apocalypse start, you negligent little fuck. Take your jacket off, you're not the fawns, I've yet to see you backfist a jukebox in order to play your favourite song. You're a fucking impersonator, and you're not even old enough to ride a motorcycle. Go home. Jesus, it's hot in here. It smells pretty disgusting too. Wow. The morgue smells pretty disgusting. Fucking Einstein. You know, my dad told me Esbrook once covered a dead writer's book in his own skin. I gotta say, you can't put someone on a hamster wheel shaped device and not let it get rolled. That's Mrs. Groves, the librarian. Oh shit, I'm gonna throw up. That's so fucked up. Disrespect in a body like that. Oh shit, Esbrook's back. Let's get out of here. No, wait, hide, hide. <laughs> Hiding in the morgue. Now this is where shit can end badly. Brought a pizza down, why not? For the mortician, he's got a bit of style so far. Soda, pizza. Are you trying to get away from me? After all okay. we meant to each other? Okay, I thought this guy was kind of cool before. He's clearly an absolute fucking psychopath. All those times you turned me down. Mine. All mine. Fucking hell. Please come back to life and cut his head off. Give us a smile. Oh my god. Come now. You can do better than that. That's a fucking maniac. <laughs> there, now. That's better. What's this? 
you didn't make her smile. You just fucking broke her nose into her face. You're clearly not good at your job on top of being a psycho. Okay, that's him draining the body of something I hope we don't get to see. And we do. That's fucking disgusting. The guy's just casually eating a pizza while doing this. This is a one of a kind dude right here. Is this what these people actually have to do? Hold tight Pepsi getting a fucking little promotional plug there in amongst the shit and organ draining procedure. I mean, why is he even wearing a shirt and tie? This dude should be in a potato sack at best. It's essentially a serial killer layer. But I'm all for him killing many fawns first. That was a Dracula-like dramatic about to open the curtain. I don't know who this actor is. Uh, let me know if he's been in anything else, but he's putting in a, a, one hell of a fucking psychopathic performance so far. What are you doing here? I want my cut. From now on, I want to be paid on the night before the funeral. I wonder who this guy is, funeral director or something? Well, what the hell is this? 500 bucks? I wonder if Pepsi actually did pay to get their brand in this episode because conceptually you would expect uh, the can to be in the hand of a non-villainous character. Like, you know, drink Pepsi. It's drunk by guys that fall in love with dead bodies while draining their shit. Pepsi. It's like drained shit. Guys, I'm not kidding. That's what happened to Mrs. Groves. Wow. So they actually made it out of that place without getting caught. The Goonies are showing some fucking luck over here. He said he was going to poison some rich guy's asthma medication. Get a life, Normie. He said he was going to poison some rich guy's asthma medication. Get a life. Get a life, you dweeb. Dork. Talking about a murder plot. What a goon. What? How did it happen? He had an asthma attack. Asthma? So it was his dad's asthma inhaler that got poisoned. My name is Joshua Kwan. My father... My father's been murdered by the town's undertaker, Sebastian Esbrook. Red Hat couldn't wait to drop that name. Our mission is to try to get all the evidence on tape that so we, we can... So we can fry this son of a bitch. Yep. Let him finish his sentence, child actor three. I hope that whoever finds this tape will bring it to the right person. Let's go, man. Uh, you know what? I'm loving this setup. It's like a little Goonies episode or something with uh, more horrific gore. Is the pharmacist there? Oh, shit, man. There's two of them. Uh, how are we going to see their shoes? <laughs> I've never seen such terror over two pharmacists. I think it's that one. I bet he's got a 38 on his ankle. What about the other one? Uh, he's just an old pokey. <laughs> He suspects pharmacist one has a 38 on his ankle. Highly trained pharmacist. Must be part of the highly acclaimed pharmacist SWAT division. Hi, Mr. Grundy. Why are you pointing your camera into my store when there are so many pretty girls out here on the street for you to take pictures of? So you would have them point the camera at women passing on the street instead. Well, Mr. Grundy, hashtag everyone else too. You would get cancelled in today's day and age. Someone set fire to his legs. Jeez, Mr. Grundy. Who would have thought? Oh, bodacious body! Nice. We're in the era where bodacious was an acceptable thing to say. We have entered the 90s 100% now. I hope you didn't drink this stuff. We could all get the chair. I, I wouldn't worry about the chair if I were you, Normie. I don't think you fit. <laughs> Come on, let's go, 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 This is like the Goonies. There's even one getting fat shamed. Ooh. Pretty strong for Nicely strength. done. Huh. Okay. Eat it raw, but it's not. Come back here. Come back here. <laughs> Green acid. Okay. Well, I think Normie did a fucking great job. You guys go in. I'll wait outside, alright? Go, 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 go. That was an awesome distraction. And they outrun the tall, skinny dude, so you know, who's to say he's not an athlete? We'll know when we find it. Look around. Have you found anything yet? 
Young Fred Durst showing his inability at talent and even finding things. Shit! He's screwing Brandy! Yeah. Fine. We got a little spoon to do it ourselves. So he's ripping off the, the pharmacist. They could maybe use that against him. How about up there? Oh, good idea. Okay, take the camera. All right. Why did the guy instantly follow Red Cap's advice? Was he doing things his way? Was it his way or the highway? He better watch he doesn't fall when he climbs up there, otherwise he may keep rolling, 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 rolling what? And also there was a lot of glass up there, so he might break stuff. What? He's dead. This guy gets the munchies when he's cutting up the dead and draining shit. <laughs> Well, he might be batshit insane, but you cannot deny he has a beautiful singing voice. <laughs> what a fucking mixture. I swear he's making a casserole. Someone dropped off a bunch of your invoices. Your real invoices. What? I'm putting an end to this whole stinking mess. It's over. Oh, that's what you get for fucking with a pharmacist, fuckface. What happened to your wife? Seeing as they missed the fact that she was poisoned the first time around, maybe they'd like a second chance. You know, I had a feeling you'd say something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Shit! Nate. Grundy ain't fucking about me. Look, I've got proof right here. <laughs> wow. Well, it wasn't quite proof, but it definitely was an insta-kill. It was proof of death. <sighs> Comfy? <sighs> Oh shit, he's still alive. They are underselling that sledgehammer. If you took a sledgehammer to the face, you would never wake up again. Little taste of your own medicine. Hmm? What? You have to live. What are you talking about? Put your head down. Put your head, put your head down. Open wide. That's gone. Jesus Christ. Also, I like how the kids are just straight up filming this all. I mean, there's four of them. They could essentially overpower that one guy and get the gun, but they're just filming this dude get acided in his face. That's the last person you'll ever kill, S. Brock. You're dead, you little son of a bitch. He didn't even seem shocked they were there. Put down your cameras and give me the tapes. Come and get him, Pissbrook. <laughs> Pissbrook. You're going out of business, S. Brook. Shit. Oh no. All right, gentlemen, I'm tired of the games. I want the tapes and I want them now. Oh shit. Mm hmm? Okay. He can't actually kill all four of them with this pistol. They better be careful. <laughs> oh wow. They are literally draining his organs while he is alive. This episode has some of like, not even the most brutal looking effects, just some of the grimmest conceptual brutality so far of any episode. This is fucking grim. We saw a woman get drained of shit, we saw a guy get acided in his mouth, and now this guy get his intestines sucked out while he's still alive. She's smiling. <laughs> well, at least she's smiling now. Okay, and that was episode 9 of season 3, Undertaking Parlor, and I will be back in just a minute with my thoughts on that. So, Undertaking Parlor, what did I think of that? Well, it was such a cool thing to see like a little sort of, I don't know, a classic 80s bunch of kids setup, you know, which has been revitalised in recent years with things like Stranger Things, but obviously that's a throwback to things like The Goonies, things like Stand By Me, where there's a group of kids out on an adventure that uncover some mad shit, the adults generally don't believe them. Like, we've all seen a film with a setup, but it's just a great classic setup. And it's especially timeless when it comes from this era. So to see a sort of little Goonies setup mixed with your typical Tales from the Crypt brutality was very unique in and of itself. I love that they were sneaking into a morgue. I don't know if uh, anyone's seen it, but there was a film a few years ago which kind of was similar to this. It was called The Summer of 84. And it was about a bunch of kids who thought their neighbour, who was also a teacher, I believe, was a murderer. So, like, they were trying to, like, sneak in his house to find evidence and shit like that. 
Very reminiscent of this episode of Tales from the Crypt, but obviously this came decades before that film, which is obviously an ode to the 80s, hence the title. And I love the concept as well, like, in and of itself, this character was a creepy fucking dude, he already was weird as fuck. But then when we find out that he poisoned the kid's dad through his asthma inhaler and all that other shit, it just made him even grimmer, he was already a fucked up dude, but yeah, he was also a straight up murderer by the end of it. And then when that Grundy guy found out he'd been ripping him off, he poured acid in his mouth. I've got to say, the effects in this weren't the goriest, weren't the bloodiest, but to me they were the most conceptually brutal. To fucking, like, to write it on paper even, you, if you were the writer you'd be like, this is fucking grim. Hopefully. So we start with seeing the woman get the vacuum, put up her ass, and getting her shit and intestines taken out of her. Then, we see Grundy get some sort of acid formula poured in his mouth which causes some pink blood and flesh mixture to come back out of his mouth which is fucking gross as fuck. And then we see the guy at the end get the vacuum put inside his stomach while he's alive so he can watch his intestines get sucked out into this machine. Jesus Christ what a gross episode, those poor Goonie kids had to fucking deal with a lot. But yeah it was just great, it was a great episode, I loved the concept, I loved the way it was done as well by the end, how they all had footage of him and he was completely fucked and surrounded so one way or another he was done for and he did get his comeuppance thankfully it's nice to see a bad guy get a comeuppance and uh, yeah just all in all another great episode season 3 is remaining strong thus far so if you have liked this video click like subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this and ring the bell to be notified as to when they are dropping if there's anything you want to talk about from anything we just saw or anything you want to see me react to in the future leave a comment down below and share this around to anybody you think might appreciate it or want to watch this series along with us. My Patreon link is in the description. If you become a patron, you get access to polls so you can vote on what I watch in the future. You get access to the reactions I put on YouTube weeks and weeks in advance. And you also get access to full length versions of all of my reactions. So if you want to become a patron, it helps me and the channel out so much. The link is in the description for that. And until next time, I have been BA. Peace.